question two. So we need to complete the box plot up here. And obviously we haven't got like the, the whiskers. Okay, I don't know what the, the lowest value is and the, and the highest value are. So it looks like we've got these extra bits of data. So it's given me the lowest and it's given me the highest. However, I only go and join up the whisker if it's not an outlier. Remember, we identify outliers. You just put like a little star or, or, or a cross there to identify an outlier. So we're told this information over here. So what we need to do is we need, first of all, to work out what the interquartile range is. So the interquartile range is the upper quartile take away the lower quartile. So that's going to be 26.6 take away 19.4. And that's equal to 7.2. Okay, so that's the interquartile range. So that's just, just reading that off of here. Now I need to work out, so I call this the lower fins. So like the lower, kind of in terms of what's acceptable before we call it an outlier. Right? I want to see where this line's going to be drawn in. So the lower fence, that's going to be, so I'm just going to follow this through here. So I take... 19.4, so that's the lower quartile. And then we're just going to do one and a half lots of the interquartile range. So we're going to take away 1.5 times 7.2, and that equals 8.6. I do exactly the same with the upper fence. Okay, that's going to be 26.6, and then add this in. And that gives you uh, 37.4. Right, so let's see which ones are these. Right, so that must be an outlier. And that must be an outlier because they're below this 8.6. So 9.1 is actually going to be the, the lower tail. So if we just draw a line in at 9.1, as close as we can just there. It's also, it's important to identify these points. So we got 7.6, I'm just going to put a little star there, 8.1, just put a little star just there. So do the same at the top end, 32.5, ah, right, 32.5 is inside 37.4. So on here, we can just go to 32.5. And then all we need to do, let's just pop these together. And... And there we are. We have a complete box diagram there. OK, right. Let's have a look at part B. Using your knowledge of the large data set suggests from which to uh, which month the two outliers are likely to have come. Well, OK, you need to have some knowledge of the data set. Well, October. OK, in October, these outliers we're talking about these extremes down the bottom. So they're coming from a cold month. Well, it only goes to October, okay? We're not including November, December, all of those. So October, it's likely to have come from October, but you need to have that knowledge about the data set to, to really be able to get that mark, right? Otherwise, you're a little bit stuck, all right? Um, okay, let's have a look at C. So all we got to do on C, right? is we're just given some summary data just here. We should know just from looking at our formulae book, we're told variance is equal to this figure divided by n. So then the standard deviation is just going to be this figure divided by n and rooted. OK, so I'm just going to substitute those values and if we substitute those in, that gives me 5.19. OK, all right. Oh, look, I actually had it just there. All right. I might actually just write those numbers out just so we can we can see them just there. All right. As it was to show that. Right. Let's have a look at now at part D right, and make some sense of this. So Simon decides to model the air temperatures with random variable. OK, we've got this here. Using Simon's model, calculate the 10th to the 90th per interpercentile range. So what we've got to do here, what we're actually doing is let's just draw a little normal distribution curve just so you can see. 
All right, so you've got this little bell shape just here. So what are we being asked? Well, 0 0.1 there, and then that's 0 0.1 there, okay? Or 0 0.9, if you like, just over there. So what information do we know? Well, we know that this is 22.6. What we're actually being asked to do is work out the distance from there to there, all right? That's what the question is. So we know what this figure is. We know what the standard deviation is, which is just there. Now, all we need to do here is that we can just use, on our calculator, we can use just the inverse normal. Okay, it used to be a lot harder to do this years ago when you used to have to use all the tables. But you can actually just go through and just use your calculator and obviously know how to use your calculator. So if we just go through the setup there, so we're going to pick number seven. Okay, look, you can see the little normal curve, right? Right. And number three, inverse normal. All right. And now I'm going to work out this lower point down here. So you can just put in 0 0.1. And now I can put in 5. 0.19. You just see how easy this is, right? It made this life just so much easier for us. 0.6, all right? There we go. And this should give me a figure. It's going to be a bit less than 22.6. So let's have a look. There we go. 15.94. Okay. So 15. Point, oh, that's two two decimals. I'll go nine five. Okay. Going to do exactly the same with this figure up here. Or you could look at this distance. OK, you could just double this distance. That will give you your answer because it's going to be symmetrical. Um, or you could do exactly the same as what I just did, but put 0 0.9 into it. Right? And then that will give you your answer. And if you do that, you get 29.25. So this figure, take away this figure. And it gives us a question. I was asking for the, the 10th to 90th interpercentile range, which is 13.3. Right, part E. So again, we need knowledge of the data set, right? We need to know what sort of things are in the data set. So um, there are a number of other possible answers. But for me, the most obvious answers are, are rainfall. These are things that are not going to follow, uh, not be modeled by a normal distribution. Rainfall. And the reason for this, if again, using the knowledge of the data set, is that there's lots of zeros, right? There's loads of them. And sometimes you get the uh, also classes, some is trace. That just means it's basically zero. So it's not symmetrical. OK, so it's not symmetrical. Right? I'm trying to think about how to spell symmetrical there. Um, and then again, the other one is, for, for me, most obvious, would be wind speed. And because wind speed is, is measured on the, the Beaufort scale, um, so it's not numerical data. It might like kind of look like numerical data, but it's kind of bit, but it's been converted to a number, hasn't it? Um, just been classed on that scale. So it's not numerical. There we are. 